Welcome back to this new tutorial. Today I want to show you how you can deform a poster in order to roll it up like this and then create the simulation with it in order to unroll it. We're then going to take this further and I'm going to show you how to integrate collision objects in order to make it even more interesting. So let's get started. Alright, so first of all you need the image that you want to use as the poster. I decided to use this one, but you can use whatever you want. With this ready, let's jump into Blender. And first of all I want to delete everything that we have in the default scene and instead bring in our poster image. So let's press Shift A and under image you can import it as a mesh plane. So let's select the image that I just showed you leave all the settings on their default and import the image as a plane. Then let's switch to material preview so we can see the texture. And the first thing I want to do is leave the texture on the front, but to remove it from the backside of our plane. In order to do this, we want to open up a new window and switch it to the shader editor. And then we need to press shift A and search for the geometry node. Right here we have this back facing output and if you take a look at it you can see that we get a black result on the front side and a white result on the back side of our plane. We can now use this as a mask in order to mix with our poster texture. So let's press shift A and bring in a mix node, switch it from flat to color and place it in between our texture and the principal BSDF node. Then we can simply input this back facing output as the factor for our mix node. And now we have our texture on the front and a color that we can define right here on the back side. I'm just going to leave it on this plain white color so that we can easily differentiate between the front side and the back side of our poster. You could go further and customize the shader in order to make it look even more like paper or a poster. However, in this tutorial I want to focus on the simulation part, so I'm just going to leave it with the simple shader that we have right here. So let's close up the shader editor and instead jump into edit mode. And first of all I want to press G and Y in order to move it along the Y axis, so that we can place the origin right on the top of our plane. Then let's also press Ctrl R and roll the mouse wheel in order to add more resolution to the Y axis. We only need to do this along the Y axis and we can ignore the X axis since we're going to roll it up in this direction. Once this is ready, go back into object mode and next we want to take a look at how we can roll this up into a spiral. So for now let's hide the poster and instead we want to bring in a curve spiral. So let's press shift A and on the curve I have all of those options down here. If you can't find them you need to install the extra curve objects plugin. It is completely free to download and I'm gonna add the link to it into the video description. So once you have this ready, press shift A and under curve you can go to curve spiral and add in an Archimedean spiral. This doesn't look like a spiral yet, so let's open up the menu in the bottom left corner, decrease the radius growth and let's add in a few more turns. So I think I'm gonna go with four which should be enough in this case. So once ready, I'm gonna press numpad 3 in order to get into side view, R and Y in order to rotate it along the Y axis, let's say minus 90 degrees, so that this loose end is facing upwards. Let's rotate it a bit more, and I wanna straighten up this end part, just like this. All right, once ready, go back into object mode, and we can unhide our poster. So now we want to deform our poster along this curve. This is actually very easy to do. For this simply go to the modifier properties and add in a deform curve modifier. For the curve object select the spiral and use the minus y as the deform axis. So now when I press G and Y I can move it along the Y axis and it perfectly follows our curve. However, currently it is way too big, so let's reset and press S to scale down our curve until our poster is completely rolled up. Now you can see that we get all of those hard edges, so in order to fix this, select the poster, right click and enable smooth shading. Okay, so the first part is already done and we can get to the simulation part of this tutorial. 
So with the poster selected, go to the physics tab and we can enable cloth physics. When I now play the timeline, you can see that this just falls down, which is not what we want. Instead, we want this top part to stay in place and just let the rest unroll. In order to make this happen, let's tap back into edit mode. I wanna switch to edge selection, select this top edge, go to the data properties and add a new vertex group. I wanna rename this to pin and assign the selected vertices. So now back in object mode, we can go to the physics properties and under shape, I wanna input our pin group. So when I play it again, you can see that this already looks a lot better since our top part is staying in place and just the rest is falling down. However, we have a few other issues. The first one being that our plane intersects with itself, as you can see right here, which isn't realistic at all. So to fix this, we wanna go to the collision options and enable self collision. So let's play it again and it doesn't really work which is because this distance is way too high. So let's bring it down to 0.05 for example. This really depends on the size of your object, so you might wanna play around with this value until you find something that works for you. So let's play it again and this looks way better. However, there's another issue that I would like to fix, which is that it is bouncing and stretching a lot, which I don't want to happen in this case. To fix this, go to the physical properties and we want to play around with the stiffness. So I want to increase the tension to 50, compression to 50 as well. And for the shear, let's say 35, go back to the start and try again. This looks better. However, we get this issue that it doesn't unroll completely. So maybe bring those two values down to 40. Still doesn't work completely. Bring it down to 30 and now it unrolls completely. So I think that's a nice simulation that already works great. So if you want any other results, you can continue to play around with those physical properties until you get something that you like. Or you can also go up here, press on those button and you get a few presets that you can choose from. For example, let's try out denim. However, this is way too bouncy for me. So I'm gonna press Control C and go back to what we had before. So there's one more thing that I want to show you, uh, which is how we can make this simulation interact with other objects. For example, let's press Shift A and bring in a plane. I'm gonna go to side view, turn this into some kind of a ramp right here. And if I play the simulation now, you can see that our poster just falls through. In order to fix this, select the plane and enable collision. When we play it now, you can see that our poster nicely unrolls on top of our plane. However, we have this gap in between here, which I don't think is very practical. So let's fix this by decreasing the thickness outer on our plane to let's say 0 0.005. Now the gap is a bit smaller, however, it is still there. So let's also go to the cloth properties and under collision, we can bring down this distance as well to let's say 0 0.02. Take a look at it again. And now this is placed on our plane way better. However, we get a few issues right here with the simulation. So maybe we want to bring this distance back up to, let's say, 0 0.05. Take a look at it again. Doesn't really seem to work. Let's increase this thickness outer again, 0 0.01. And now this seems to work. There's one more thing that I would like to share with you. So let's delete this plane. And instead we wanna add in another collision object. So for example, a cylinder. Let's uh, make it smaller, rotate it along the Y axis. Maybe scale it down even more, bring it down. Then I wanna move it along the Y axis. And for example, go to frame 30, press K to add in a keyframe for the location and on frame 70, I'm gonna move it along the Y axis, press K again, another location keyframe. Now let's also make it a collision object 
and when we play this simulation you can see that it can also interact with animated collision objects. Now let's say you are happy with the simulation and you want to render it. It is really important that you first bake it. So let's select our poster, go to the cache options, then input the frames that you want to use. In this case, frame 1 to 250 is fine and simply click on bake, which is going to store the simulation into memory. This is really important because otherwise you might get uh, some issues when rendering this animation. So let's just take a look at it one more time. I use this technique quite a lot recently in order to create videos like this for my clients. So let me know in the comments if you want a part 2 of this tutorial where I'm gonna take this further and show you how you can integrate this into a real video. Finally, I just quickly want to mention that you can download all of the 3D models that I create completely for free from my Blender Kit profile. I'm gonna put the link to this into the video description. The link also gives you a 10% discount for the Pro version, which allows you to get thousands of 3D models and materials from other creators. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching.